Get back up. Oh, I'm trying. I'm trying. On your feet, princess. I'm getting up. I told you to grip the sword like you're giving a handshake. You have done that before, right? Or are you too scared to touch someone who isn't a royal? Oh, shut up. Why don't you stop being weak? Okay, I'm, okay, I'm okay, weak. okay that's stop. enough for now. Let's take a break from combat and go over battle spells. I'd like to cover them before Tegas arrives. <laughs> uh, battle spells? Right. Here's the thing. Can't wait to hear this. I don't know any. What do you mean? I never learned any. Or defense spells, for that matter. Holy hellfire. How is that possible? Even the lesser magical folk know basic defense spells. I was raised for a life of peace. <sighs> Hold on, let me think about this. We, we don't necessarily need you to fight. But, but I want to learn, and I'm not totally useless. I know other magic. I just don't know anything about fighting. She is a Sith, after all. She should have some pretty powerful elemental magic in her blood. I, I do, I do. Watch. Plata, Forma, Rosa, Clo. Flowers? She can grow flowers. They're medicinal herbs. Look, that one's lavender, and that's echinacea, and the... You... you've turned my sparring ring into my grandmother's kitchen. Ugh, oh, Tegas. You have to be kidding me. He brought his own herald? We watched the gate crank open to reveal a procession of official-looking carriages flying bright flags. What's with all the family crests? <coughs> Walker! I should have known you'd be out here knee-deep in mud and horse crap. A squat man had lumbered his way out of the last carriage and was walking towards us. A young boy followed him with a wooden box. They were both dressed in blue velvet with gold trim. <laughs> and he brought a page as well. Why are you bothering us, Tegas? I'm here to speak with Atlas Sith. Oh, where is she? Walker tensed. Vansa took a small step forward. No one said anything. How do you know Atlas Sif is here? Oh, please. You can't possibly have thought you were going to keep that a secret. The whole middle realm knew before her horse was even boarded in the stables. <laughs> what business do you have with her? I can only stand in the mud surrounded by the help for so long. Where's the princess? I demand you take me to her. Walker turned to me and gestured, his face blank. Tegus. It's my pleasure to introduce Atlas Sif. Princess? Well, well I, I, I am sorry. I, I did not recognize you in your disguise. If you could be so kind and... Uh, he uh, exclaimed uh, suddenly as if remembering something and then broke into a bow. Princess, I must speak with you in private. It is of the utmost importance. There's an empty corridor in the West Wing. I said in private. I'm not leaving Atlas's side. Walker took a small step forward and the power radiating off him was undeniable. For the first time, I was thankful for our strange arrangement. Don't be absurd. You want to spy on my business. I have no interest in your trite dealings. Listen, the binding spells on Atla, yoking her to Praxis, are having a reaction to the dark scar he left on Walker during the Westgale battle. To prevent Praxis from sensing her location or accessing her mind, she needs to stay close to Walker. Or would you rather Praxis arrive and string you up like a calf for slaughter? Huh? What do you think? Either you accept the circumstance or be removed from the castle. Option's yours, Tegas. I see. Thirty minutes later, we were all in a small, half-empty room in the west wing of the castle. Walker and I sat on one side of the table and watched Tagus, sweating and clearly uncomfortable. 
He took the box from his page and shooed him away from the room. Tagus turned from the door with a smile and went to sit across from us at the table. What a sight for sore eyes you are, princess. I have brought you something as a welcome gift from the fourth house. He opened the box the page had left and revealed a pile of gold coins. So your house has funds to help the defiance after all. Interesting. This is for the princess. Cut to the chase, Tagus. I don't have all day. Tagus shifted towards me, his eyes watery blue palms. It is my honor to announce, Atla, that I have come to fulfill the prophecy. (laughs) I'm sorry. I, I don't think I understand. When you were born, there was a prophecy made that explains the whole thing. Yes, I, I know. My destiny is was to marry the most powerful mage in the land on my 21st birthday. Our power would usher in an age of harmony and prosperity for the realm. Oh, so you are aware. Your 21st birthday is only three months away, if I'm correct. Yes, but... What does that have to do with- He thinks it's the other half of that dumb prophecy. The fool has come here to ask for your hand in marriage. Shut your mouth, you territory trash! Walker sprung to his feet and pulled out his sword. Say that again. The two men stared at each other, neither looking away. Thank you, Tagus, for the gift. But my focus is... uh, I have other, more pressing matters to attend to. Tagus turned to me, his face pulled tight in a forced smile. I understand. I will be staying at the castle this evening if you wish to speak more, princess. He offered me a moist hand. I took it, reluctantly. I hope you will consider my words carefully, Adler. For our future. For the realm. Absurd. Not only does that bird brain believe in prophecies, but he thinks it's for him. He thinks he's the most powerful mage in the realm. You don't believe in the prophecy? Of course not. Prophecies are just another tool of the royalty, another way to trick us into thinking our destinies are, are predetermined and can't be changed. But 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 the wises taught me that prophecies usually come true. Prophecies are so vague, they're open to infinite interpretations. People are bound to find ways to declare them correct. Walker's expression hardened to one of complete contempt. He turned away from me, his hands and fists at his sides. Believing in prophecies is dangerous. For what that belief can cause you to do, and what it can stop you from doing. At that moment, I realized that I had always accepted the prophecy as true. I had never once questioned its validity. Bad news! Yanta sent word he'll be here by evening and wishes to speak to Atla. And Donathan has come as well. Ugh, turn him away! Tell him the- But I'm already here. A large hand had pushed the door open further and in walked an elegant man. Tall and well-defined, he had large eyes the colour of black coffee and clear, smooth skin. Atla, meet Donathan Prote of the Seventh House. I watched, mesmerised, as he bowed deeply. Every movement he made was so measured and graceful. Princess, we finally meet. Donathan sat down in the chair Tagus had just worn. A gift. He pulled out his own small box. It's a lovely necklace. It's yours. Here, let me help you. As Donathan's hands brushed the nape of my neck, I saw out of the corner of my eye, Walker flinch. All right, now Donathan, go ahead and tell us how the prophecy was intended to be about you, not Praxis, and that you and Atla should marry in the name of the realm. I see why Tegas looked so befuddled when I passed him on the stairs. It seems I'm not the first to think that there is hope in the prophecy still. And now every child from the Nine Houses is going to show up here and distract us from our mission. Atlas should be training right now. Can you blame them? There is still a dream of peace, Walker. Hope for a better world. The hands of an unjust system. 
She's not here so we can destroy Praxis and then reinstate a royal hierarchy. She's here to help the Defiance create a world where everyone is equal. I understand. Well, I will be here for the next few days if you wish to talk further. The graceful man stood and dipped his head towards me before closing the door behind him. Walker and I sat in silence. Was I here to help create a world where everyone was equal? I had not thought much past stopping Praxis. Did I want to change the political system of the realm? I was a royal. After all, I had been raised to believe that structure was determined by the gods. And yet, ah, oh, everything I learned about Praxis felt like a result of the royal hierarchy. People thinking they were above others, born to deserve more, more power, more wealth. A belief so insidious it drove people to destroy villages, take bread from starving hands, kill innocent people. It went against everything the Wises had taught me about peace. Back to the ring, Atla. We've already burnt enough daylight. <laughs> Outside, the sun was high, and Nurse Vaiyi was clearing the plants I had grown earlier. There she is! What a gift you have brought us today! You'll use them? Of course. This is a blessing. Now, we are running very low on ginkgo, so if you get a hankering to grace us with your magic again... On how are you feeling? Any more dizziness? I heard you had some suitors. Sycophants is more like it. I feel great. Thank you. Better than ever, actually. <gasps> oh. Walker and I rushed to the uproar as a mad frenzy of horses galloped out. The stables were full of the Defiance horses, but now that Tagus's and Donathan's had been added as well, the place was jam-packed. I ran down the hall looking into stalls for Starcrit. <laughs> Starcrit! Starcrit! I didn't have time to think. Suddenly, three giant horses to our right took off, charging directly towards us at full speed. Walker grabbed me by the shoulders and pressed me up against the stall door, using his body as a shield. I winced, feeling the same shot of electricity from earlier, like a lightning bolt. But this time I, I anticipated it, and I was able to fight through it. Pinned against the stables, I, I realized a man had, had never touched me like this before. And Walker was certainly a man. The thought immediately sparked a new sensation. A primal desire for his hands to move over other parts of my body. I, oh, I gasped. Atla, <laughs> can you hear me? Nurse Fai. No, uh, uh, I'm fine. We, we don't need her. Walker took a step back, inspecting me from head to toe. We made eye contact and I quickly looked away. Uh, I could feel my face flush. She should check you out. Ah, uh, I'm okay. Uh, really. Did you feel it again? Yes, but, but I was expecting it and, um... You overcame it. That's impressive. I had to get out of the stables. Had to get away from Walker. Adler. The air was stuffy and warm and I realised I was out of breath. When I thought of his body pressing against mine, my core throbbed. Mm. Oh, my cheeks burned. A stable hand looked back and forth between us. Atla, Nurse Vai! Yes, dear? No, don't! I was desperate not to be examined. I was certain that if she looked closely, she'd immediately know my thoughts. It felt as if something had changed inside of me, and, and she would see it written across my face. Can you walk? Uh, yeah, yes, of course. But my legs felt wobbly and my knees weak. I forced myself upright. I had to prove that I could skip medical attention. <laughs> Just a brief moment of uh, lightheadedness. Nothing to worry about. You should lie down. I said I was fine. Nurse Vai? Yes, dear. Or back to my room to lie down? Those are your options. You're not in charge of me. Yes, I am. I am in charge of what happens in this castle. 
Now, which one are you going to choose? You are infuriating! Pick. Now. We headed back to Walker's room, waving at Nurse Faye as we passed. All right. The whole time Walker was behind me, I was sure, ready to catch me if I fell. I could feel his eyes on me, watching my every move. I wanted to turn around and tell him to focus on something, anything else. But every time I thought about speaking, I remembered his body, pressed on mine and felt a tingle. We have a few hours before dinner. Do you want something in the meantime? No, I'm just going to lay down for a bit and, and then I'll be back to normal. Please, gods, please, gods, let me go back to how I was before we entered those stables. Vansa, you found us. Good. Heard the princess was almost mowed over by a few of Tagus' cart horses? Let me guess. She needs a nap after dodging the most mild danger anyone in this castle has ever faced. And now we are once again having to delay important meetings. We can talk here. I almost turned around to admonish her, but I was too nervous to look at Walker. Would he see the change on my face? What's the update? Yanta ignored several cease commands sent by ravens. Uh, He will arrive before nightfall. A lecherous boil who is walking around here like it's his castle. Donathan brought four pigs for the defiance, which was thoughtful, though we both know he could do more. Nevertheless, he'd like a meeting with you whenever you're available. He says he has news from the West concerning Praxis. Bring him now. I want to hear it before Yanta arrives and this place becomes even more chaotic. Vansa left and Walker sat down at his desk. Slowly, inch by inch, I turned my head until I could see him. Bent over, studying the same map he'd been glued to the night before. He was... gorgeous. His tan skin, his chestnut hair, broad shoulders. He was the most beautiful man I'd ever seen, and somehow I had been oblivious to it until this very moment. He even smelled divine. I took a deep inhale of his room. His scent, like grass and leather, surrounded me. How had I missed that before? You're awake. He was looking right at me. Um, no. I mean, yes, uh, but just barely. Come in. Vansa and Donathan entered. It was the first time I'd ever been happy to see her. Donathan, have a seat. Walker. The Vansa says you'd like to speak. In front of the princess? Adler is resting, and uh, unfortunately, for the time being, we can't leave each other's side. You have news about Praxis? Yes, Vansa. I do. There was something in the way he spoke to her that caused an immediate tension in the room. Anything you have to say to me can be said in front of my head of security, Donathan. Why? Is this request anything to do with what's going on between the two of you? Don't waste my time with nonsense. Was Donathan saying that Walker and Vansa were together? Quick to interject on his behalf. Praxis's army is on the move. They've left the Western Mountains and burned two villages to the ground. Which way are they headed? Hard to say now. But as far as I can tell, it appears they are en route to the Middle Territories. It looks like they're coming... here. 